can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave and now please welcome kaya bruno from samson cree first nation to perform tonight's Canadian national anthem in Cree and English. Oh, Canada, Nikina, Nitaskina, Kisa, return home to Rogers Place for a three-game homestand, the opener of which will be its first ever regular season game against the Seattle Kraken. As we get a look at tonight's starting goaltenders, brought to you by Tim Hortons, the official coffee of the National Hockey League, Miko Koskinen off to an outstanding start this season. He'll look to keep it going with Stuart Skinner backing up up tonight on his 23rd birthday. Meanwhile, Joey Decord, who got not one but two starts in here last year as a member of the Ottawa Senators, will be entrusted with a start on the second of 15 back-to-backs this season for Seattle and head coach Dave Haxtell. Yeah, the first time they're going to meet the Edmonton Oilers in regulation. They saw them in exhibition, but this is the team. This is what they're going forward with, and this will be exciting for them to play against the Edmonton Oilers for the first time in their inaugural season. Excited to see this team in action. Bit of an Oiler feel on the Seattle bench tonight as one of those Oilers, Adam Larson, in the Seattle starting lineup. Meanwhile, Ryan centers Cassigan and Warren Fogle, Keith and CeCe, and it's Seattle taking an icing call right off the hop. Your starting lineup brought to you by Scotiabank. Scotiabank believing there's a place for all Canadians in Canada's game. And Dave Tippett starting the third line, an energy line up against the energy line of the Seattle Kraken. And, you know, anytime Brandon Tanev's on the line, you know it's going to be an energy line with Yanni Gord and Yarn Croak. They're a line that really likes to get in there and work off the cycle and bang bodies. And for Dave Tippett, he wants to go head to head with his third line. Ryan pulls it back to Cody Cece off the draw. Tana off to a sensation start. Six goals for a guy with his career high 14. He's still in the top 10 in terms of the league's leading goal scorers coming in to tonight's game. Warren Fogel will keep the zone for Edmonton. And now it's laid off the boards and out by Adam Larson whose five previous seasons right here at Rogers Place. 
Jeremy Lazant, hard-hitting defenseman out of the Boston Bruins organization, up to Gene Schwartz. He's looking to get off the schneid tonight. This is a key line. Here's a searing pass and a quick wrist shot, and that was stopped, and what a chance for Wenberg early. Thrown back behind, and it's Schwartz. We're gonna score his first goal of the season. Neither he nor Donskoy have one for Seattle. Donskoy. Twisted off the puck, recovered, but his pass off the mark, and Seattle will have to give chase. That was a great A chance for Wenberg in front, and a beautiful little pass by Schwartz in the backhand to find him right there in that quiet spot. He just slips into the slot. Icing and that, call Seattle. And, Jack, that's what we kind of expect from this Seattle team under Dave Hackstall. They play a fast, aggressive style, especially in the offensive zone. They're going to forecheck. They're going to get in there relentlessly. And right here, just a, maybe a little bit of a miscommunication. It's a good finish right there by Don Scroy. And then Schwartz, a little spin around a backhand right to Wenberg in the slot. Anyway, what doesn't get much better than that early on. He just didn't handle it that well. Didn't get the shot. Maybe he wanted away, but that's a great chance early on for Seattle. On the crack and waiting patiently for this line to explode. They're three, five, and one coming in. Edmondson looking to go seven and one for the third time in six seasons tonight, and in doing so, would improve to five and zero, oh, perfect in the Pacific. Sent in by Max McCormick, the 29-year-old, well-traveled forward, who's getting a crack with the crack, and this is second game. And we've got a hand pass in the offensive zone. Seattle wait for Edmonton to touch the puck. They do, and they get a chance off. And McCormick stopped by Koskinen, protecting that short side. Leon drives up, hustling it in for Edmonton. Yamamoto also looking to get going. Barry redirects it home off the boot of Leon Dreisett. Louis, they don't ask. How? They just ask how many. You're exactly right, Jack, and he'll take that one. And it was his work on the, the rush up the ice. A little chip in charge by Dreisaitl. Yamamoto comes in second. Now, he blows a wheel coming into the corner, but because he's aggressive, that puck goes back to Barry, and he's putting this down to Dreisaitl. He has his head up. Dreisaitl has a stick down, and bang, goes off the stick. Skate, sorry, into the back of the net. And like you say, sometimes you have to be lucky. He presents the stick right there. It gets lifted at the last second by the defender. Dunn goes off of his skate into the net. one nothing Edmonton. Dry subtle sixth. Barry will get the primary helper. And that's his 399th National Hockey League point for Tyson Barry. one nothing Edmonton. Quickly wristed in by Larson. Taking over Barry. Dave Tippett has singled out for praise, especially the last two games. Felda's game really turned around against Philadelphia last Wednesday. The best game of the year by far. He was all over. Not just the goal and assist that he had, but just the way he played in the defensive zone as well. He was jumping, and that was all him on that play. Once he got that puck, two strides, he found Dreisaitl. It was supposed to be to the stick. Get a little bit lucky. McDavid, the league's leading scorer, 16 points coming in, points in all seven. This return pass from Louis Arby off the mark. Barry on a reset, finds Pugliarvi open, and he'll just wind it around for the waiting McDavid. Toss back behind, and that kicked off the boards to CeCe. Pugliarvi came within an eyelash of having points in all seven. Louis hit the goal post on Saturday against Vancouver. CeCe hard around the boards. Seattle tries to set up. Bracken beaten last night in a game where they outplayed the New York Rangers for large stretches, but fell three to one. Just couldn't find a way to put it home, and that was the concern coming into the season. Where were the goals come from? Yanni Gord, one of those guys, challenges CC up top. Now it's Tyler Benson, his 10th game in the NHL. Shot was blocked. Rebound corralled by Kyle Turris, double team. Jumping into the fray as Devin Shore to keep it alive momentarily. Finally snagged by Gord, who won a pair of Stanley Cups the last two years with Tampa Bay. Softly up the boards for Jane Schwartz, the longtime St. Louis Blue. Hits the line through Nurse, a back there, he scores! Just what we were talking about, Schwartz needing to get on the board, he does, and this game is tied at one. Oh, what a beauty goal by Schwartz, and he just took off from the defensive zone. That puck was up for grabs a few times, and a few flybys that stuck around. Schwartz eventually here with speed. He's just gonna pick this one up, and he says, you know what, I'm gonna go right down the middle. This is a nice little move. He knocks the stick away, 
of Darnell Nurse. So Nurse tries to play that with a stick. Watch him kind of lift it after he puts the puck through right there. Doesn't allow him to play the puck, and then bang, the quick backhand catches Koskin in five hole and ties this game 1-1. What a great individual effort by Jaden Schwartz. Though not the prettiest backhander we've seen out of Seattle in the last yeah. 24 hours. That one by Everly last night was a laser. Vintage Everly. Seen that a few times here in Edmonton. Back Derek, in the day. Derek Ryan charging in. 500 plus games as an oiler for Jordan Everly. Yeah, Brought Jordan the other way by Alex Wenberg. Giordano and Ward given assists on the scoring play. That's Jaden Schwartz's first of the year. And for the four time 20 goal scorer, a sigh of relief. Edmonton may be guilty of icing. There's the whistle. This period brought to you by James H. Brown and Associates, Alberta's precedent setting injury lawyers. Accidents happen. JamesHBrown.com. Here's another look at that great individual effort by Jaden Schwartz. Just kind of taps it through Nurse, and again, that little lift of the stick to kind of separate, find the puck once again. And big reason why the Seattle Kraken wanted him as a part of their team. He won a Stanley Cup in 2019 in St. Louis, and he just has that, that talent at any moment to kind of break out and have a game. That was a beautiful goal by him. Speaking of talent, Bouchard and Nurse cemented, it seems, for now, as Edmonton's top pairing. Tyler Yamamoto whipped it around the boards out of the reach of Nugent Hopkins and cleared by Nathan Bastion of Seattle. Retrieved by Barry, he'll sling it along for Yamamoto. Challenged and drilled by Larson. That's the kind of hard-nosed play that drew accolades when he was an oiler. This may be icing against the crack, and Koskinen's going to come out in the gate and keep it moving for Slater Cuckoo. And Larson kind of chuckled this morning when asked about playing his old friends. He says, yeah, once the puck drops, he says, you know what? It's game on. Penalty. Hot and fresh pizzas, wings, and all the game day cravings delivered right to your door by Pizza 73. Score a great deal at pizza73.com. Mark Giordano going to the box two minutes for a holding. He doesn't like the call. He had a long discussion heading to the penalty box, but here it is right here. It's the left arm. Once you reach around and grab the arm of an opponent right there, dry settle right away kind of motion that he did it, and that's exactly what the official saw as well. Two minutes for holding. Referees Tom Shimoleski and Jake Brank. Linesman Jonathan Deschamps and Brandon Galritz. And the Oiler power play just scorching. Back to work. Number one in the league, a shade under 48%. Barry Nugent Hopkins. But gave it a one-timer to save by Joey Decord. The first ever Arizona State product to make the National Hockey League. That was a pretty good save by Decord right there. The one-timer by Connor McDavid. We're seeing that a lot this year. A little change up in the power play formation. Nice pass across by Nugent Hopkins, the no-looker. And Decord reads that well and gets across and closes it off. Drysaddle doesn't lose many offensive zone draws on the power play, but he loses this one, and Seattle will take advantage of length of the ice clear. This has been a strength for the Kraken in their first nine games. 90% of the penalty kill. It's a good matchup. New Hopkins, Hyman, backdoor score! There is no match for this power play. Drysaddle's got a pair already, and Edmonton regains the lead in 2-1. They can hurt you in so many ways. It's incredible. They can hurt you off the rush like this one here. Immediately up the ice, Two on one and a beautiful pass by Hyman to Dreisaitl, the big paddle down on the ice. And he shovels. Look at this. You can see Dreisaitl wave, and he wants this puck up the ice in a hurry. Get it up. Beautiful pass across by Nugent Hopkins and a better one by Hyman. He can take this puck to the net if he wants to. Nice little sauce pass onto the tape. I thought he was going to go to the backhand, but at the last second he sees Dreisaitl. You're not going to miss that big paddle. Puts it right on the tape, and he shovels it home to gain the lead once again for Edmonton. And suddenly there, Louis, Drysaddle gets an airborne because Decord actually got over. So if you don't elevate it, you get stoned. But Drysaddle, as you know, what a finisher. Yeah, great move there. And two goals for Drysaddle already on the night. One lucky one off the skate. That one there, a beautiful pass. But you're right. It's almost impossible to stop the power play of the Edmonton Oilers and why teams come in with the attitude to stay out of the box, don't take unnecessary penalties, because you just saw how quickly they can make you pay. So maybe pump the brakes on talking about the opposition kill. <laughs> They've been good. You're right. They have been good. And that's 
You know, that's a big part of it. Chris <laughs> Nurse with the steal on Jordan Everly. As Morgan Kinky was flying the zone, that was a good play by Nurse to prevent a potential breakout. Bully Arby to McDavid. And now Nurse. Bully Arby off to McDavid. Power play goal, dry settle. He's got seven on the year. Hyman and Nugent Hopkins with the helpers. Ryan Nugent Hopkins leads the league now. That's 11 assists for Nugent Hopkins in seven games plus. Bully Arby. Raked from his grasp by Dunn, but then snatched away by McDavid. Ducks behind. Tried to shimmy his way through Ryan Donato and had his pocket picked in the process. Cleared by Dunn, lofted through everyone, and that'll be an icing call. An opportunity to get some fresh legs on the ice after a tired crew on that icing call. Here's the goal again. A beautiful first pass by Nugent Hopkins on the stretch up the ice, and then for Hyman, he just kind of waits to that last second to shovel that over to Leon Dreisel and Mark Giordano, obviously not too happy in the penalty box. After taking that holding penalty on Dreisaitl, he makes him pick. Even amateur lip raiders have a pretty good idea. <laughs> Off the draw, drive by Nugent Hopkins, that was redirected wide. Snatched away by Duncan Keith, he'll put it behind the net, Yamamoto. Pestered by Carson Soucy, who draws in tonight for Seattle. And now Keith, the drive, that didn't get through. Blocked by Everly. CC just inside the blue. Dry subtle surveying. Saucer back, Nugent Hopkins, and that was booted away by Donato, but kept alive. Dry subtle again, drag move around Geeky. Centering pass, redirected. Yamamoto waits and could not thread it through. Heavy traffic in front. Gets it right back, fires, and again blocked. And we've got, I think, is. Dunn Something's and Nugent Hopkins on. are lodged. They're Their skates are lodged together. <laughs> I have never seen that in 20 years of covering pro hockey. 2-1. We're just getting started at Rogers. Considering Leon's already got a couple of goals, but uh, there was a previous Halloween. This is when the team was in Sweden and Germany. Darnell Nurse and, of course, former Edmonton Oiler goaltender Cam Talbot and uh, while we went away to break Adam Larson yeah waving the stick because it was a nice acknowledgement by the Edmonton Oilers organization for a guy who poured his heart and soul into the Edmonton Oilers for five seasons he talked to the current Oilers and they certainly miss him and they're adamant about that <laughs> and that's from a guy who's poured his heart and soul into it for a quarter century Gene Principe third member of our broadcast team tonight. Jack and Louie with you at Rogers Place. You've missed a lot. If you're just joining us, I'm sorry for your luck. 2-1 Edmonton. <laughs> We've seen a few quirks in this game, too. Slater Cuckoo up the boards. Warren Fogel. Marion Cassian. Jammed in there and Decord. Lays it off the glass. Giordano cannot clear. Ryan to Barry. Kind of half man though, but still muscled it over to Cassian on his back kick. Supporting his Vogel. This line so good in the early going. A big part of Edmonton's six and one start. Gene Principe. Well, uh, Louie and Jack, you talked about it right off the hop about uh, the Edmonton Oiler connection to the Seattle Kraken. We discussed Adam Larson. Let's not forget Riley Shan, who was an important member of the Edmonton Oilers penalty kill while he was with the team. And of course, Jordan Everly, who's uh, been in the West, been in the East, uh, back in the West. And he said, yeah, it's a lot more travel. Adam Larson's accustomed to that. But he also spoke about the fact his family, in fact, his mom is here tonight from Calgary. So for him, he likes being part of a new franchise and being back out West. Pulled free to Cody Cece. Now Keith a drive, and that was blocked. Thank you, Gene. Centering pass, Turris and Everly Key and the New York Islanders' recent resurgence. Larson fired a dart up the middle. Shan is able to pump it in, but Keith to Cece. And the puck immediately exits the zone. As we come up on the halfway point of this first period, Oilers, next to Leon, dry settles two goals, another lead. They've been deadly when they get up. 5-0 when leading after one, and the same when leading after two. Terrence. Tyler Benson forces back behind. Set up the right hand side by Susie. Heavy hit on Devin Shore. A bit stunned. Thought perhaps there was a penalty in the offing, and now a steal by Terrence on the counter. His wrist shot deflected. 
Yanni Gord able to scoop it up. Turris hangs around, though, and maintains possession. Nurse from the point. Redirected, grabbed by Hyman. Try to go short side with it. McDavid creates space, and it was popped off his stick to the one-time Nashville Predator. Callie Yarnbrook, not out. McDavid settles. Bouliardi will give it right back to him. Tanev sandwiches McDavid against the boards. That was well played by Brandon Tanev in Seattle. Able to break out. Didn't even look at the puck, just eliminated the ball, and that's what you have to do against McDavid. Even still, when you do that, he slips out of there more often than not, but Tanev held his ground and was able to separate that puck. It was those wide eyes. Brandon <laughs> Tanev likes yeah, the big the, open eyes. The great picture, Ted. <laughs> Up the gut. Don score. Jaden Schwartz, a shot partially deflected. Doskin sails it into the corner. Retrieved Donskoy and Giordano takes a shot that's deflected high off the plexi. Nurse run into from behind by Schwartz. Seattle's goal scored. Now you've got a centering pass from Wenberg broken up, and Yamamoto will extract. Lead pass on the wing. Corralled by McDavid. Giordano's right in his grill and will force McDavid to change as he sends it up to the right hand side for six foot seven Jamie Alexiak. Draft last eight. Ryan Nugent Hopkins pestered him into a simple dump in, and Koskinen will leave it for Barry. The lead for Yamamoto. Larson back to collect. Played well this year for Seattle. Contributed three helpers. Off the boards, Cuckoo back behind Yamamoto. In the general direction of Nugent Hopkins, Larson able to close out, fight off dry side. Cuckoo right there, forces it. Yamamoto and now Barrett. Edmonton on the perimeter, looking to build on the lead. Dry settle to Cuckoo, a shot that blistered wide. Rebound taken off the Dashers by Donato. He'll slow the pace. Vince Dunn quarterbacking. Mike Schwartz of St. Louis Blue and a sneaky, tough customer. Fires a pass, right wing. Bastion defended by Duncan Keith, playing game at 12 hundred tonight. Louis DeBrus. He's been around, no question about that. Doesn't look like he's played that many games with the jump in his stride still. Can still get around the ice pretty quick, as you saw in that play. Oilers whistle for an offside. Devin Shore shaking up, but back in action. Edmonds it up 2-1 in the first period. I am loath to give you credit, Louis DeBras, but in getting ready for tonight's game, he said, you know what? Leon Dreisaitl's been building his game the last couple. Well, he's just, it just seems to me like he's found that stride. And for Leon, it usually takes him a few games to kind of really find that stride for him being a big guy and handling the puck. But I thought he was strong against the Flyers. I thought he was the most dominant player on the ice. And again versus Vancouver on Saturday night, he was making plays, holding on to pucks, and already tonight has two goals. And only a matter of time before he heats up and starts to really bury pucks in the net. He's doing it once again. And a two-goal game tonight, the 35th of his National Hockey League career. Off the right-hand side, Dunn did not get it out. Chance for Nurse, and a backhander denied by Joey DeCord. Loose puck came right to Darnell Nurse, and DeCord squeezed the five-hole shot. And now, a message from Sports Interaction. Providing competitive odds on all sports. Sports Interaction is Canada's odds maker. Nice save by Joy DeCord on Darnell Nurse, who pinches down the wall, gets tangled up. This puck turns over on a nice play by Hyman to put it down to him. And tries to go to the backhand, and an aggressive push off the right skate by DeCord. He's able to pounce on that puck, but for Nurse, that puck just bounced to him, and he says, okay, I'll take it right to the net. Looked like a forward up the ice. I was going to say, he yeah. looks like a frustrated winger. <laughs> Backhander denied by Joey Decord. He played really well in one of those starts last year for the Ottawa Senators. Outdueled 3 to 2 in a game where he made 34 saves. Gordano pinching down low to Seattle Kraken. Looking to equalize matters as we come up on seven to play in the first. CC to Fogel. Did not get it out initially. Tanner guides it back. Gord thought about it. Then dropped it off. Alexia. 15 back to back. Oh, 
That's tough sledding for a first-year team. CeCe gave it away. Alexiak on the counter, maybe a three on two. Gord, cross Isaac was there. Yard first, failed to finish. That was there too on the tape. You're right, Jack. And he got tangled up with Koskinen a little bit, Yarn broken. That was why he was a little bit late coming out of the zone. He was there on the transition. Alexiak to Schwartz, not in position. And that was a solid job of backtracking done by Kyler Yamamoto on a dangerous man. In fact, Schwartz, the only Seattle goal tonight. Dry settle with a pair for Edmonton. Alexiak with a steal at center. Every once in a while, he'll turn into Dangles. Now Don scored in that with a backhander, and that sifted high over the blocker. Into the corner, grabbed and cleared by Barrett. Dreisup makes a move, stood up by Dunn. Tracked by Jaden Schwartz, off to Alexiak, he looks up ice. Lobs one ahead, fielded flawlessly by Wember. Change of pace on Barrett, and the net poked away at the last moment. Got some help on the backside from Guka. Five-player pile up in the corner. Nugent Hopkins hovering. Dry side, pestering, attempting to dislodge. There we go, there we go, there we go. 20 years ago, this was a whistle. <laughs> Finally, nudge free by Nugent Hopkins. Dry side, barrels through one man. And then held up effectively on the far half wall by Donato. On the move is Geeky. Great shot saved Boston. Rebound recovered by Barry in the outlet. Played ahead for Tyler Benson and from center he'll dump it behind the Seattle defense. Larson poked it into the corner. Susie hog tied, reversed by Donato back behind. Quick pass to Larson. The outlet Donato from center, a high floater. Retrieved by Darnell Nurse. Third in the league and ice time coming in. Eke tried a centering pass. Picked off by Benson. Fell down, did not get it out. Tana. Quick pass, now loading and firing, and that puck cleared off the goal line at the last moment. Bouchard saved the equalizer. Giordano fishing after Atana. That was almost too many men on Yanni Gord. Now Seattle completes the change, and Alexiak walks in. Tana with a shot, and he fanned on it. Uli Irving played it well defensively. Hyman held his position, but Yarn Crow held the zone. Trying to shoot it on net. Bouchard took that one away. Bully Arby was cut off, and now McDavid follows up. Puck cried free by Gord, but Hyman snuck back door. Going to make a foray to the net, so it's going to be Tanner with a high, twisting puck that'll lead up Duncan Keith. Gord is able to dance around him. Keith's closing speed flattens Gord. Now you've got Bastion working on Keith. Gord again. Tried the wraparound, not there. His centering pass intercepted by Hyman. Arby starts the rush. Play is offside. Looked offside. A late call, but a correct one at that. And Edmonton's 2-1 lead remains intact. Alexiak through Koskinen. But Evan Bouchard keeps that one-goal lead afloat. It's from Big Stone Cree First Nations, who has created, with the help of the Edmonton Oilers, a very special logo, and it uh, features the stylized Oilers mark incorporated into the body of a turtle and highlighted by eagle feathers, which represent creation, wisdom, and spirituality. Now, the turtle specifically is in reference to Turtle Island, which is the landmass upon which all 32 NHL teams compete. What a great look and a great collaboration. He's R.G. Principe, Jack and Louie with you at Rogers Place. Oilers opening a three-game homestand. They've got Nashville in town on Wednesday, 6.30. Wednesday night hockey, and then Friday, a 7.30 tilt. Scheduled with the New York Rangers. Kevin Lowe's jersey going up to the rafters here at Rogers. Dassey and Fogel, a hard-working shift. Finally, Seattle able to extract. Vince Dunn hits the line with a shot that's rocketed out of play by CeCe. And Seattle has elevated their battle level here in this, the end of this first period. And real good sequence of events for them where they had a couple great chances. That one by Alexiak right on the line. There was one before that. Wenberg with a real nice move to the net. And for Dave Haxtell and his team, this is the way he wants them to play. And it just took them a little bit of time to get the feet moving. They were on their heels a little bit to start this game. But this is a team that last night outshot the Rangers 13-2 in the second period. When they put the pedal to the metal, they can really push you back, and we're seeing a little bit of that late in this first period. Well, your point, Louie, I mean, Edmonton only has four shots. Problem is, 
Oilers have two goals. Jane Schwartz in from the right hand side. Tried to find Wenberg. Bit of a drive by there. Loose stick on the ice. Momentarily bothers Drysdale, but he eventually finds Cuckoo in the outlet and the dumping. Then grabs the puck in the corner. Turns it back. Nugent Hopkins over to Cuckoo. The shot drifts just wide off the end boards. It's Drysdale. Shoveling down low, Nugent Hopkins gets worked over by Giordano. Those two have been battling for a decade plus. Drysdale hacked away finally by Wenberg and now coming over to collect Tyson Berry. Drysdale one touches it in, but Giordano crosses to Alexiak and it's backhanded in. Aiden Fleury a healthy scratch tonight for Seattle. What we assume, we haven't been told any sort of injury, but he's not in uniform, which is notable because he had a two-goal game in a win, one of Seattle's three earlier this year. We got a penalty coming. It's coming to Devin Shore for high sticking on Yarn Pro. Just got the stick a little bit high when he was trying to lift the stick, catches him in the face. Extra attacker. On for Seattle, six on five. Larson fell down as he hit the Edmonton line. And now the penalty will be enforced in the Kraken with an opportunity to kind of revive what has been a dormant power play for them through it, the first nine games. It just hasn't taken off. That's the one area they'd like to improve much more on. And right here, you're going to see the stick come right up as Shore goes right through. His stick kind of pops and comes up and catches Yarn Coke right in the face. Question on that one. Now the interesting thing here, Lou, is that Seattle's actually three for 15 on the road. It's at home where they're an 0 for thus far. So reasonable power play on the road and so much attention focused on the power play. And I thought Gene Principe made a good point. Boiler penalty kill right there with a the crack at 90% coming in. And Jared McKenna the lineup too. Last night and tonight, that's another real key player on their power play. He's getting opportunities. Donato steps into that spot. And he can shoot it. Yeah, but one of those guys, McCann, you were saying, Louie, that, you know, Seattle's hoping to break out. Maybe a 20, yeah. 25 goal season. He's been on the doorstep lately in his career. Slowly building his game. But he's in COVID protocol, so missing the back to back for Seattle. Clear off the draw for Edmonton, who has Ryan Yamamoto, Nurse, and Bouchard on. Everly to Donato. And then played back to Jordan Everly. Got two goals for the Kraken. Battling, kicked in front. And finally cleared by Bouchard. Smart little play by Bouchard right there. Doesn't try and force it, just gets his head up. And this is what Dave Tippett has talked about. He can make a play in traffic. And right there, just as soon as he gets it, finds that seam. Doesn't have to be hard if it's in the right spot. Less than a minute to go in the period. Edmonton up 2-1. There'll be about a 19-second carryover. If Seattle does not score on the power play here, an outlet to Nugent Hopkins on the length of the ice clear for the Oiler kill unit. Hyman and Nugent Hopkins, token four check. Keith and CeCe round out the foursome. Half minute to go. Don Skoy looking to trigger. Done. Sloops in. Geeky with him. Sent around to Schwartz. Back behind CeCe. Trying to melt some clock here. ZC and Keith have it under control in the corner. Puck lodged against that kick plate, the yellow stripe right beneath the dashers. Finally dislodged. Hyman with five seconds thinks about making a play here. Over the line. Centers and the horn goes. Hyman lost track of time. And Edmonton does not get the shorthanded chance. Oilers with a 2-1 lead after 20. Despite just four shots on net. Coming up, Gene Principe with Chief Wilt Littlechild as well as the panel with Jason Strudwick and Bob Stoffer. We are indeed 2-1 Edmonton and Jason Strudwick talking about the penalty kill, Louis, still 19 seconds to negotiate for the Oilers. Yeah, Devin Shore still in the box after that high sticking. He had a little conversation with the referee going off after the period, thought that, you know what, listen, my stick was kind of bumped up into the face of Yarncroft, but from the referee's perspective, it was certainly a penalty, hit him in the face, and 
try and finish off this penalty kill with 19 seconds, but I agree with what Jason was saying. The penalty kill has been real strong this year. And when you have different people in there trying to figure things out, it's the communication, especially on a penalty kill, that makes it effective. They've been solid. 19 seconds away from making it 12 straight kills as Giordano up the left-hand side, broken up and quickly steered out by Zach Hyman. Nugent Hopkins, Nurse and Bouchard finish it off, and Seattle did not get a shot on that power play, but here's Tanev at even strength with a challenge for Koskinen. Makes the save, no problem. Bouchard and Nugent Hopkins, and now Hyman breaks free. Alexiak back. He'll take it behind, take it out. Crowd wanted a call, none forthcoming. And Alexiak just continues to churn up ice. Angles one toward Koskinen and left for Bouchard. Up the gut, turned over. Here's a chance, and Schwartz had it redirected by Koskinen over. Off the plexi, McDavid. A dart to try a shot to save made by Joey DeVore. His best stop of the night, and his first stop of any kind in a while. Oilers limited to just four shots in that first period. Tossed back in by McDavid. We see Dave Tippett do this. Load up McDavid, dry settle, and pull Yarby off a penalty kill. CeCe. Dry settle, double team. Flashed it over McDavid. Throws one toward the net, and a save made by Joey Decor. Nudge free by Pugliarvi. Spins and deals for dry subtle. Rockets it out. McDavid shot. And that was tipped over top. I think McDavid heard what you were saying between periods, Louis DeBrus. Just angling one on net, testing the goaltender. I don't got tipped. It was a hard shot. Dry subtle. McDavid briefly held, and there's the ball. Dry subtle to the net. And it's thrown in front. He scores. His first as an oiler. Duncan Keith makes it three to one. Well, you said it, Jack. It's almost like having a power play after a power play against. This is what Dave Tippett does. He loads it up. Dreisaitl McDavid and Paul Yarby, who was a beast on retrievals on this shift. It was over a minute in the offensive zone after a power play is killed off by Edmonton. They go to work, and it's almost like they have the man advantage. When they put this trio together, they are so dominant. This is the type of things they could do. They had it on their stick the whole shift, and eventually Duncan Keith, who has been pitching down the last few games and been sniffing around the net, gets his first as an Edmonton Oiler after a huge effort by Pauly Arby to keep the play alive down low. 3-1 Edmonton. What better way to celebrate a 1,200th game in the National Hockey League? Just a staggering total. And he picks up his first goal as an Oiler after scoring 105 in a 16-year career in Chicago. McDavid and Drysaddle fittingly the helpers. Everly with a toss in deep. As Edmonton leads by a count of three to one. Donato won a battle, and I think he's drawn a penalty here. Slashing call. This period brought to you by Yellow Cab, Edmonton's hometown advantage. You've got places to go. They are ready to roll. Choose Yellow Cab. Slater Cuckoo is going to head to the box. Two minutes for slashing here, and you were right. It was a good response shift after a goal against. Go to work in the offensive zone. That little tap right there. Yes, it hits stick, but it's close to the hand. And for Donato protecting the puck down low like that. Anytime you get that stick up into the hand area, it's going to be called, and Seattle will go back on the power play for the second time this game. Ryan Nurse, Bouchard, and Yamamoto on the penalty kill. Off the draw. Here's a chance. Gord fired one wide, and that puck would not sit level for him. I think it was still on edge as he whacked it wide of Koska. He'll get it back from Giordano now on the left half boards. Gord. Cross ice, what timer Donato fought up by Koskin and rebound cleared, and that crawled over the stick of Giordano. Seattle must retreat, and it's flicked down the ice by Derek Ryan. Giordano, yeah, we, we were on a call in the 2021 preseason, which was in January, and they talked about that as a point of emphasis last season. That little stick in the hands that you pointed out, Louis. Donato. Giordano, wrist shot, save made by Koskinen on Callie Arnpro. Shovel down low for Jordan Everly. 
Yarn Croak. CC and Nurse protecting. Hyman and Nugent Hopkins round out the quartet. Jordana. Donato. Pressure. Held them at the point by the Seattle captain. Everly across. Wrist shot. Save made. Koskinen. Again on Yarn Croak. And then Everly couldn't get it to him. The second effort chases Giordano back to center. 40 seconds left on the Kraken power play. Hoskin and two big saves on this kill. And now a clear up the right hand glass. Great saves. And he has to, the goaltender has to be your best penalty killer. And, you know, the, the panel just talked about the penalty kill. A couple great chances for Seattle. Hoskin was there to take it away. Done to Geeky as Seattle pours back in against Bouchard, Keith, Shore, and Fogel. Keith wires one around the boards and out. Joey the board with a quick hand to Donskoy. Punched ahead. Geeky off balance. Slid a drink line for Dunn. Shot back in, but Edmonton's killed off another one. 13 straight for the kill. 20 of 22 on the season, and now Bouchard will emerge. Fogel and Keith join. Keith return offering for Fogel. And now here comes McDavid and Pooley Irby back on for Edmonton head coach Dave Tippett. Fogel heads for the bench, Louie, and he goes right back to the same threesome. Dry Suttles back off. Worked out the first time and extended the lead to 3 1. Nurse. Gobbles warm up. Threw it behind. McDavid against Lazan. Spun off the puck, fell down. But Pooley Arby there with support to Nurse. Barry. Ushered over to Dry Settle. Already with two goals tonight. Return pass. Dry Settle. Looking for that fifth hat trick in his NHL career. Bodied up by Larson. Five years a teammate. Nurse. Barry. McDavid. Saucer to Nurse, fired back across, that hopped over the stick of dry saddle, and Luzon able to get it clear. Barry jugs back to make a play, finds Nurse weaving his way in. Dry saddle heading for the net. Curls, waits. One more time, and now a backhand flick over to Nurse. Barry thought about it, moved to McDavid. Interior pass, Pooley dumped to the ice surface. Larson. Shoveled it free, and now we've got a trip. I think Pooley Arby might have reached out and caught Lazon. Adam Larson directs a pass ahead for Yanni Gore. Delayed Edmonton coming against Edmonton. Nurse went for the big hit and missed. As Churis touches up, Edmonton will be placed shorthanded with six minutes gone here in this, the second period. Seattle on the power play when we come back on Sportsnet. NHL. Over to Yanni Gore, up on edge, and he misses the net right from between the hash marks. This one gets across to Donato, who can really rip that puck, but it's a knuckler that Koskinen fights off, and this is the best chance maybe here. Yarn Croak with a real good one-timer in the slot that Koskinen fights off once and almost a second opportunity. On the next shift afterwards, there's the trip right there by Pogliarvi that gets him two in the box, and the Kraken will go right back on the power play again, Jack. Your comment, though, as we were just sitting here getting ready for the second period about the shot output when Edmonton returns to full strength, you look up at the board, three goals on six shots. Ryan, Yamamoto, Keith, and CeCe illustrating the validity of that thought loop. But first things first, got to kill this one off. And Derek Ryan starts in the right way with a face-off win and a CC clear up the right-hand side. Yeah, we talk so much about face-offs on the power play and the offensive zone for possession. It works the other way, too. Win that face-off, you're killing off 30 seconds right out of the gates on the penalty kill. Everly to Gore. Chipped it back to Giordano. Yamamoto, token pressure, keeping Seattle to the outside. Donato, cross-ice, one-timer, and that clipped the side of the post on Koskinen. Retrieved by Everly. Giordano, Donato surveys the interior, grips, and then tried to dish. Giordano, Gore, Giordano couldn't pull the trigger. To the corner for Gore. Giordano, Donato. Giordano, 23 goal season on his resume, but Yamamoto a steal and a length of the ice clear. Seattle's got to pull the trigger there. Yeah, you know, a little more shot mentality. They're really moving it around the outside, looking for that perfect play, and a little bit of chaos with the shot. 
They have guys that can shoot. That Donato on the, the half wall there has a wicked wrister, and he's looking to pass that puck, maybe have a little more of a shooter mentality. Donskoy change of pace and a save cleaned up by Koskin, and after Donskoy did beat Darnell Nurse around the corner. But again, Koskin three times already in this period has made crucial saves on the kill. Done. Regrouping for Don score. Again, matched against Nurse. Chip back for Dunn. Softly to Winberg. 15 on the power play for Seattle, trailing 3-1. Winberg side of that. Schwartz crack at it, but Koskin had, had the lower half protected. Schwartz again. Spins, waits, trying to center, closed out by Nurse. Evans it's back to full strength. Yet another kill. Here's Wenberg in front. Back to five on five. Larson is there. Six shots for Seattle on the power play in this second period, but no goals. Edmonton a goal at even strength. And as a result, the one goal lead is now two. And here comes Zach Hyman. Angling one off the boards for Yessa Pugliarvi. Hung up with Adam Larson, finishes his check. With Pugliarvi out there, you know who's next. McDavid and Dreisaitl along the ice, but it's Tanev on the reversal. Bastion could not squeeze one through against Tyson Berry, who had the lane closed out. Louis Irving's six foot five. You tend to forget that. And it just absorbed that shot from Riley Chen, kept his feet, and allowed Cuckoo to clear for McDavid. Brief bobble by Louis Irving with Chase. McDavid and Larson in the corner. Squeezing down the wall is Cuckoo. McDavid in front. Louis Irving wasn't ready. McDavid threw it back to Berry. Now Dreisaitl. Five on five, and it does look like a power play, as my partner suggested earlier. Dry subtle. One timer crushed by Barry into the ankle of Larson. And Riley Sheehan with a clear for the Seattle Kraken. Rosano will hit the net. Kicked aside by Koskin, and a second time off the stick of Nico Koskin. And here comes McDavid the other way. Hitting the line with speed. Around board, the poke check by DeCord smartly in the corner, rolled in front. And Yarncroke there to clean it up. Back is Keith as Yarncroke fires it in, guided into the corner by Koskin, and now following up is the hulking Alexiak. Yarncroke breaks away from CeCe, but then coughs it up to Dryson. Keith pawing at it. Yarncroke does well to hold the zone and now open to Susie and shot save Koskin and rebound loose. Batted around for a moment and finally grabbed by McCormick. Gets it back from Yanni Gore. Out to the point. Susie hesitates. Dreisaitl closed out, forced the pass to the corner. And McCormick stapled there by Cece. Gore continues to pester. Booted free finally by Derek Ryan. Heavy traffic behind that Edmonton net and finally slugged out by Keith. Yeah, both teams are really doing a great job of keeping it to the outside in the defensive zone. And you talked about the big line goes out there after penalty kill. And for Seattle, they're comfortable just keeping them to the outside, the long distance shots. And then Edmonton does the same thing back in their own zone. Here's Fogel, one on one with Alexia. Not one of the too many men call moments ago. Fogel trying to center just out of the reach of Devin Joel. Gaskin. Floats behind the goal, waits for a pass that comes his way. Backhands it out to Bouchard in a fierce battle with Jaden Schwartz, who pulls it free and now leads the rush the other way for Seattle. Donskoy had it hacked from behind by Fogel, who now looks for a feed for Bouchard. It's deflected. Turris still working hard to extract, force back in as the Kraken make a line change. Shots are 17 to 6, Seattle. And yet Edmonton leads three to one. And remember the Kraken on the second of a back-to-back. -back. Fair to wonder whether some of the gas the Kraken have right now will expire at some point in the third. We saw it a little bit with Anaheim a week and a half ago. Here's Donato. Engaged. Grabbed by Keaton. Defended by Bouchard. Has passed too far for Everly, but skating into it, Gordano. Activated. Keeping it alive for Everly. Against Turris. And a broken stick for Geeky as he tried to one time it tore the net. Now he doesn't have a stick, so he just soccered it over to Ryan Donato. Two Oilers go right at him, and it's Nurse who jams it off the wall and back at the Seattle zone to earn an icing call. All dreams start at home. 
Chase yours in a customized plan by Coventry Homes, the preferred builder of the Edmonton Oilers. The World Series on Sportsnet continues as the teams head to Houston for Game 6. Braves and Astros tomorrow at 7.30 Eastern, 5.30 Mountain on Sportsnet and Sportsnet now presented by TD. Atlanta leads the series three games to two after Houston's comeback win last night, which I watched, and let's get to Game 7. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, Atlanta had a chance to close it out on their home field. Now they got to win one of two in Houston. Here's Brandon Tanner. Shipped it behind for Koskinen. Hard up the window, but not out. Gord able to choke that one off. Nurse to Nugent Hopkins. And a high lob will force Lazon to handle. At center, Yamamoto bothered. But Tan up there to take over for the Seattle Kraken. Larson with control. Lead pass missed Tanev, and this will be icing against Seattle. Through every challenge you face, we help you return and rebuild because that's what it means to build confidence together. Well, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl starting off where they left off last year and combining for 33 points in the first eight games this year, Jack, and you can see the numbers there. Just continue to push, and again, they've been at it again tonight. Two leading scorers in the league right now. McDavid with 17, Drysaddle with 16. Drysaddle, two goals and an assist, looking for another one in front for Yamamoto, and then Nugent Hopkins a chance to finish, but had it popped off the blade of his stick. Cuckoo able to settle it down inside the blue. Over to Barry, and now Drysaddle. Barry the dish for Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Dry sun. Swooping. Crowded by Donskoy, and it's forced back the other way by the Kraken. I think they'll wave it off here, and they do. Another example right there where they just keep dry settle to the outside. Good chance for Yamamoto in tight. Nugent Hopkins on a second opportunity right to blue paint. And maybe that's a mentality Edmonton has to take a little bit here. Is just start funneling pucks into the front of the net. Make sure you have a presence there because the Kraken are doing a great job at just really clogging up the middle of the ice. It's an icing call against Edmonton. And they're looking for that turnover. They want you to try and force a pass through that. Once you do, if you pick, they pick it off, they're, they're off to the races, and they're a team that really attacked off that transition. And they're chasing the game, so they're going to really be relentless trying to go up the ice. For Edmonton, that has a two-goal lead right now, they can kind of kill the clock a little bit if they want to let them hang out there. But at the same time, you almost want to look for more once you're in the offensive zone. Oh, and especially, again, to illustrate your earlier point, three goals on seven shots. Yeah. Crash. Test them out a little more often. Absolutely. Able to get it in deep. Cuckoo sent it up the window for McDavid. With Hyman and Pugliarvi. Susie fires a pass for James Schwartz. Checked by Cuckoo. And Schwartz is healthy. He's a 20-goal scorer annually. And nicked up with some injuries over the years. Susie Schwartz down to the goal line. Back hitter Winberg once, twice, and a splayed out Koskin and able to keep it three to one. McDavid emerges, tries to split the double team, take it down, no penalty call. Crowd starting to get frustrated. Boy, Irby behind the net. McDavid left it for Duncan Keith, tried to pop it down low. Alexiak with a successful clear to Everwood. Five minutes to play, second period. Still a two-goal lead for Edmonton. Keith whips ahead for Fogle, the drop pass for Zach Cassian. Slid down low, Fogle in the vicinity. Players down again, Shea included in that next basket. Rolled it across, Keith picked it and sent it the other way for Fogle, and now offside, whistled against Edmonton. And some rough stuff right in front of the Oiler bench. A little bit of a late hit by Cassie in there, just kind of flew into Bastion. Not a big hit, but just enough after the whistle to kind of create this little bit of a group and a ruckus. Connor McDavid wasn't too happy on that last rush. He thought there should have been a penalty on the play. He looked back at the officials and was like, are you kidding me? Driving through the traffic. But a great chance at the other end. 
On a night where Edmonton's been outshot 18 to 7, lest we forget, it's Koskinen in the pipes. Well, roughing penalties handed out to Max McCormick and uh, Zach Cassian. And it uh, doesn't matter where you are, you want to be in the building if you can on Friday. It marks a very special evening at Rogers Place before the Oilers host the New York Rangers. The club will be honoring new Hockey Hall of Fame inductee Kevin Lowe by retiring his jersey and raising his number four. The ceremony will feature Kevin's teammates and family. It begins at 5.45 p.m. Some tickets, not a lot, remain for the game. So get them while you can. They are still available at edmontonoilers.com slash tickets. I look forward to Friday. Louie, you were a young NHL player yeah. under Kevin Lowe. Yeah, my captain, my first couple of years in Edmonton, looking forward to Friday night versus the Rangers and seeing that number four go to the Raptors. Much overdue, in my opinion. I think one of the greats, and obviously one of the greats that I got to play with. It was a pleasure. Real leader, you know, he did everything. And uh, it'll be a special moment when number four goes up there. He was kind of an on and off the ice guy for me, Louis. My first year in Edmonton, as you know, moved my family to a different country at the Christmas party. You know, the yeah. first Christmas party, that, you know, awkward feeling. And who's over there talking to my wife, yep. who doesn't know anyone in the city at that point? Kevin Lowe. Nobody's bled the colors more than him in Edmonton, that's for sure. Loose gear. Up too. Yeah, what's going on? <laughs> I think his helmet was taken ransom briefly. Draw one cleanly against Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Coincidentals, so we've got four on four hockey for you. Cassian and McCormick. On the four on four alignment, Wenberg and Yarncroke move in for Seattle. Harmon trying to draw closer here. The Oilers leading by two goals. Late second. Wenberg, the dish, and that's out of the reach of Alexiak. Dry subtle, Nugent Hopkins, there's Bouchard. Bouchard is right there with Nurse and time on ice lately. Here's Dry subtle supporting Nugent Hopkins, wide open Nurse. And that was kind of a half pass, half shot. He was looking to hit the stick of Nugent Hopkins. Dry subtle. A little give and go with Bouchard. One touch, Dry subtle feathered it across, and a one timer denied by DeCord, sliding over to Rob Nurse. Good movement on this four and four by Abington. And a little more ice to work with, space. Not able to clog it up as much. And with Drysaddle and Darnell Nurse out there, you know they're going to exchange up, down to high, down to low. And it's Darnell Nurse that gets into that spot that Drysaddle typically is in. Nugent Hopkins drive into the net. Good save by DeCord there. Hasn't faced a lot of shots, only the eight. He's let three go by him. Fluky one off the skate of Drysaddle to start things off, but makes a good save on that one. Towards Adam Larson. And now a dish for Yanni Gore. Back behind, pursued by Cody Cece. Kayser wondering, all-time low for the Oilers. And he's got a lot of hockey left to play. 11 shots on net in a single game. Last time it happened, 20 years ago. It's happened three times. After a miss by Gord, Seattle on a regroup against Hyman, McDavid, Cece, and Keith. Lazan to the dump in. He's trying to one-hand it up the wall. CC and McDavid with support. Now the rush developing with McDavid and Hyman. Centering pass broken up. On the play to Larson's stick. Controlled in the corner by Hyman. But Larson using his body as a shield. Able to angle up for first Don Scoy and now Lazon. Koskinen stops the puck's momentum. Slithered it by Everly, but cutting it off, Vince Dunn. Everly with open ice. Here's inside. We're back to five on five. Poked away by Hyman. And the threat dies. Nurse, that roll off the stick. McDavid there. Curls it back to center. Brandon Tanner centers. Everly a shot. Left pass save made by Koskinen. The rebound to Cassian. Well, it's a bit sloppy right now, quite frankly. Bouchard. Fogel deals. Cassian left for Nurse. Left point shot, targeted wide by Joey DeCord. Pumped up the boards. And Bouchard trying to go cross ice. Sail beyond the reach of Nurse. 80 style wave going up at Rogers Place. Here's McCormick. And yes, Louie and I are old enough to remember when it began across North America. Still Behind the net, Barry. 
Off the right hand side. Derek Ryan. Jacked off the puck. A lot of people think it originated at Seattle's Kingdom. I would suggest if you look up the 1981 Oakland A's in the Major League Baseball playoffs, it might have started there. Lead pass right side basket. Crosses. Shot Susie and he scores. And the Kraken have cut it to 3-2. Carson Soucy with his second goal in six games this year. Well, as you mentioned earlier, Jack injected into the lineup for Hayden Fleury. And we're not sure if it's an injury to Hayden Fleury, just a change in defense in a back-to-back -back situation. But Soucy absolutely buries this one. And for Edmonton, they've gotten a little bit careless through the neutral zone. They've turned some pucks over for the Seattle Kraken. They've been pushing. The late man is Soucy here in a beautiful pass. Bastion gets his head up, finds him late, right onto the tape and from the top of the dot, picks under the bar to make it a one goal game. So just a good drive wide. Bastion finds the late man and Seattle has continued to push. That's the 20th shot on net already for them. 3-2 the score now. Bastion and Geeky yeah, on the numbers on Susie's second of the year. Game sports. A brief foray into the Edmonton zone. Oilers have been outshot handily tonight. Still lead 3 2. That goal well earned, and now a trip on Yamamoto. Wenberg took him down. The other power play. Boys to see if it can restore a two goal lead. As Keith and Drysett will trade the puck, we got an extra attacker on. Six on five, 45 seconds left in the frame. Keith, one touch over to McDavid. Across to CeCe. Yamamoto stacked in front. Keith to McDavid. Feathered it down low. Nugent in front, and the board able to smother it. Yamamoto moving his feet. Well, you heard Jason Strubrick talk about the other things that Yamamoto does, and this is a big part of a two-drawn penalties, and because of how fast he is getting in there inside and just keeps his feet moving and draws the call right there. Wenberg just has his stick into the skates and takes him down, and the best power play in the National Hockey League goes to work, and that's why it's such an advantage to have someone that draws penalties. I believe that's his third drawn penalty in the last four games. Tonight's major part of the game brought to you by Napa Auto Parts. Parts that make the difference, that's Napa know-how. Well, here's the first goal, and it was on the power play for the Edmonton Oilers on transition. Tic-tac-toe into the back of the net, and why this power play is so dangerous. McDavid on the current power play. A quick dish off to Barry. Final 15 seconds of the period here. McDavid centers, quick shot, drives on a rebound, McDavid, and that might have caught a portion of the pipe. Here's Nugent Hopkins, five seconds. Behind the net, McDavid. Wheeling, centering, dry settle, scores! Or no? Is it underneath the court? It is! At the horn, the Oilers had <laughs> arms extended. My apologies. Dry settle even, thought it was in. His hands were up. And I'm going to believe the goal score. Yeah, they usually Not know. to bail myself they out. Usually That's, know. I'm guilty they... right there. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. What a save by Decord at the last second there from a sharp angle. And how about how quickly Edmonton went to work on this power play. They knew they only had a few seconds to work with before the end of the period. They had two great chances Whoa. out of it. And right here, McDavid to Dreisaitl. And right there, it looks like it's in. Look, at even McDavid put his hands up a little bit. He's thinking there's no way he's missing from there. But Decord comes across, closes the pad. And you can see the puck in between the pads of Decord. Edmonton settles for a 3-2 lead. Ken Reed with a Sports Central update on the other side. <laughs> Thank you, Gene. Edmonton 5-0 with leading after two this season. And, Louie, you were making the point earlier about the power play. Sometimes, even when it looks accidental, it's actually yeah. all part of the plan. It might be the best power play I've ever seen It actually making something out of nothing, especially a mishap. It's a block shot, a deflection. It gets into the wrong hands and bam, they just know where each other are on the ice every second of the time, like you heard Jason and Bob talking about. This is killer instinct time though, and it's not always about how many power play goals you score, it's about when you score. Right now, the Seattle team pushed in that second period. They were the better team, I think, throughout it. They have an opportunity to go up by two here with the killer instinct on the best power play in the league. Bracken have been a good second period club, as Louie Louis mentioned, completely dominated the New York Rangers and had very little to show for it. 
last night in an eventual 3-1 loss. Now, short-handed, here come the Kraken. Rich shot whip just wide by Yarncrow, who's had some good looks tonight. Remember, this is an Euler power play for 90 seconds to start this final period. McDavid, there's a bounce off a skate. Nugent Hopkins to dry sun. That was exactly the combination that resulted in a power play goal in a win over Vancouver Saturday. Dry settle from Nugent Hopkins, fired on that, saved the court, rebound, chipped off Nugent Hopkins stick, but held in by Barrett, who picks forks it down low for Yesapuli Arby. Dry settle guides to Barrett, across to McDavid. Back door, tipped away from Dry settle. Active stick, Riley Shane. Dry settle. Nugent Hopkins, one timer, Barry, and a block shot by Yorkshire. That'll chase the Oilers at least as far as neutral. Still a half minute to go on the man advantage. An unreal 50% this season for the Oilers. Drysaddle jams it in. Nugent Hopkins, crowded by Larson. Drafted three players apart in 2011. Nugent Hopkins, Drysaddle back door. And Heel of McDavid's stick. Dry settle to Barry. Five seconds now on the man advantage. McDavid crosses. Shot. Bouchard stopped by the court, had a clean look. And despite four shots on the power play, the Oilers come up empty. Now five on five. McDavid to Cooley Yarby went off a skate, flipped into the corner by Larson, and now Yanni Gord will try to power it out for the crack. Can't do it against Cooley Yarby in that wide frame, but. Eventually reverse to Lausanne, and he'll quarterback it up through center. Wrist it around, glass hurts. Lost the handle, Wenberg. Susie, who drew Seattle within 3 2, drives a shot, batted down in front, and then backhand deflected over by Nurse. Off the stick of Donskoy original. Schwartz. Donskoy. Punched away by Nurse, but not out. So Ryan against Wenberg. Flubbed it. Ryan will take advantage off to Warren Fogel. And they will lose finally break out. Two hopper fielded flawlessly by DeCord and he'll squeeze. A much more shooter mentality in that power play for Edmonton. But right off the face off, it's the Seattle track and that little bobble right there for McDavid. He tries to push it through to himself and a 2 on 1 develops. And this is a great chance. That's just fired wide by Yarncroke, who had a great block on the penalty kill, too. That chance there was one of their better ones. The backhand pass by Dreisaitl, just as you mentioned, off the heel. And didn't miss by much. I think McDavid actually made contact with that puck through Lazan's skate. <laughs> but I like the fact they were shooting. Here's Everly. In on net. Denied! Miko Koskinen. His largest save of the night. That could have tied it, and Jordan Everly, sublime hands in tight denied. Yeah, he's always had great hands in tight, and loves to go to that backhand, which he did last night with his zinger. The only goal to crack and score in that game, and he just makes a nice little play on the wall, wins the battle, protects that puck, the right leg comes out, and I think he wanted to elevate that, obviously, a little bit higher. That's twice the puck has rolled off the tip of his blade. He had a good chance in the second period to shoot the puck one to go under the bar that one too and it flubbed off the end but twice he's been in close in the goaltender in a dangerous spot. Great look from our crew Louie and it kind of revealed Koskinen was all over that. I'm not sure Everly would have had any success there even if he does elevate. Young shot kicked aside by Koskinen off the draw then ripped by Giordano window crowd and blocked and the fourth line will emerge. Short, Torres and Benson out there with Keith and CeCe. It's short. Sharp angle. Tip toe by Kyle Turris. And the fourth line responds with a key goal to extend the lead. Four to two, Kyle Turris. We well, heard Bob Stoffer talk about it. Both the third and fourth lines, goals against in this game, and they had to get something going. Beautiful goal here on a nice cross ice pass right through the blue paint. A little chip in by Turris, followed up, and it's going to be just a battle one. We're going to watch Shore. He takes that puck and puts it right on the tape of Kyle Turris, who just funnels himself to the back door and taps it home. For his first goal of the season, that's a huge goal by the fourth line. And that's exactly what Dave Tippett has been looking for. That energy provides something. You're not going to get a whole lot of ice time. Go out there, make something happen. That's exactly what they do and extend the lead to two. 
Turris had the game winner in the season opener, the shootout win over Vancouver, but that was an extra time. That's his first of the year from Devin Shore at 257. Big goal for Turris personally, too. Here's Bryce on the long ball, muscling his way toward the net, and the good work by Jamie Alexiak, giving full marks for fighting through that, and now Dreisaitl goes down in a heap. Turris limited to just two goals in 27 games a year ago. Yamamoto will wind it in. A three-time 20-goal scorer over the course of his career. Luxury of a guy like that on your fourth line, he can change the game for you. And sure, put it right in his wheelhouse as Seattle's baited into an offside. This period, brought to you by Skip the Dishes. Let's get hungry. Turris had a real good look against Philadelphia, Lou, you'll yeah, recall. That one chance to tie it up. Yep, just missed. So the Oilers with goals within the first three minutes of every period tonight, and back to a two-goal spread. Barry to McDavid. Slides it in. Joey DeCour. Off glass. Four goals tonight on 15 shots for Edmonton. Efficient, if not the output that perhaps Dave Dick would have been looking for. Buku wrestled to the ice. Puck pops out in front, but McDavid there to take it out of danger safely. Alongside Bully Irving and Hyman. Punishing hit delivered by Lazan and Larson. Stunned Pooley Army. Barry ragging the puck, takes a shot, that was blocked, and now we got a penalty coming against the Kraken. One whack too many from Lazan. Century Casino, all in, all games, all season. Century Casino, great locations in Edmonton, St. Albert, and Century Mile Racetrack. Welcome to the Winner's Zone. And yes, a Bully Arby just doing what he does best, just disrupting in the offensive zone. And you said he kind of tumbles in both crack and kind of take him out. But that's the type of presence he has. As he gets up and goes back to the net, you're going to see Lazon right here just kind of stay with him and knock that stick away from not allowing him to pick it up. Unsportsmanlike. And another power play to the number one power play in the league. Bully Arby's drawn the most penalties on the team this year. Here's Barry to Nugent Hopkins, side of the net. The court covers up against Hyman, and it's struck down the right-hand side. Important that we mention Koskinen, the save on Everly, and then the fourth line scores at the other end. Could have been 3-3, instead 4-2, and all of a sudden the Oilers with a chance to maybe dim the lights a bit. Here's McDavid weaving in. Rich shot off the rush, and the court sent that one hurtling out of play. Uh, nice little. Exchange there between Larson and McDavid, ex-teammates for the last five years. And nice block by Larson to stay with him. But this is the fastest we've seen McDavid wind it up in this game. And he walks down, tries to use Larson, that last stick right there. And probably a little cheeky remark by Larson, taking that away from him. McDavid to smile a bit. Good to see. It's Larson who got that before the court could. Here's McDavid off the draw, circling. Dealing in front, that went off Lexiak and nearly angled in. Now on his backhand, he'll find Wenberg open in the middle. Trades the puck with the yard broke, and they come in over the line. Wenberg was dumped, and the Oilers back on the attack on the power play. Here's McDavid, centers, and that stayed out. Left for dry settle. McDavid loading up, dishing. What timer Barry block shot Larson. High in the air, swing and a miss from Wenberg. Barry to Nugent Hopkins. Hyman in front. Joined by Dry Settle in the slot. Here's McDavid. Drag move, kicks it back. What timer Barry, and that was tipped just wide by Hyman. Rebound McDavid. Barry, Nugent Hopkins. Still looking for his first goal of the year. Chopped off his stick. Barry gets it right back. Receives from Nugent Hopkins. McDavid gets it back from Barry. Here's inside and lost it. Cleared by Alexiak down the ice. A little fumble there, and Alexiak was excited to be able to get that out of harm's way and get off the ice and get a little bit of a change. That puck was in the offensive zone for a while. I think a lot of people are looking to get off the ice against this power play. Here's Mark Fogel, crunched by Susie, lifted out safely by Gore. 
Nurse backing off five seconds left on the power play. And a good point, Bob Stauffer made it in terms of that second power play unit already on the board twice this year. A couple of shots on the power play for the Oilers, 17 of the game, and a two goal lead as they'll take an unforced icing call here. And it's just the pressure they continue to put on in the offensive zone, and it's the recoveries and how many different options they have to make you pay. And this one here, redirection by Dreisaitl, the nice shot. I don't know if Barry got all the, the shot that he wanted there, but the knuckler gets through, and Dreisaitl, good hand-eye coordination. Holy Arvey on the flyby two was right there. If that would have been on net, and anything would have been left over. But again, it's just pawn hockey. Once that first shot is taken, they go to work, and they just have a knack for finding one another. Here's a dish to Everly. Waiting, centering. There's an adage. Luck is the residue of design. And I think it comes into play on the power play. I don't know where that adage is, but you can tell my dad was an English professor for 40 years. They get a little bit of that through osmosis. Just don't ask me about poetry. Here's the tourist walking in. Try to go cross ice, and that's dipped away. Schwartz will settle. And the crack and reload. in the form of Shore, finally hits a cutting Donato. He cuts him off. Still on his backhand, Ryan Donato. Makes a twirl around before being relieved of the puck. Keith has sent it over. Bouchard did not get it out. Keith one hands it along the boards. Still not out just yet, ducking inside Donato. Don's going close quarters, finds Wendler. Draped all over him, Bouchard forces a give to Donato. Nowhere to move it. Stays on the perimeter for Alexiak. Trying to shot blocked, and here comes Ryan on the count. He's got Yamamoto with him. Plays onside, big hit on Ryan, and a dangerous one because that door was partially open. Ryan seemingly none for the worst for wear, but he took some heavy punishment on that hit. Size mismatch there with Alexiak, who's just a huge human being. And for Ryan, it was a good job just to protect that puck. Took a heavy hit, like you mentioned. You're right, that door did just open. And always dangerous. For that happen. Well, a minor league game one time, and Scott Gomez fractured his hip on that exact kind of play. An open eight. Here's Yanni Gore, and that went off the curved glass, and thus is out of play. Edmonton for Seattle too. Fourth line, a huge goal. Kyle Turris on the board. Well, when you're a franchise that's new to the National Hockey League, you have a lot of firsts, which would include uh, Jordan Everly and company having their first Halloween party. Former Edmonton owner Ryland Shan dressed up as Willy Wonka and uh, Morgan Geeky, who you may not know, but you might recognize who he dressed up as. That's Dwight and uh, Angela, and then uh, Jordan Everly and his wife Lauren dressing up as uh, Kurt Cobain and uh, Courtney Love. And I'm sure for Seattle in their first game in the NHL, they were a bundle of Nirvanas. <laughs> Pounded in by the Oilers who lead it 4-2. Do you ever have a favorite costume as a kid? Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go oh, come on. That's why they call him the best analyst in North America. <laughs> Succinct. Baseball player, it was really easy. <laughs> Succinct, <laughs> on to the next subject, please. Yanni Gord in. I was a cowboy for about six years in a row. Yeah, baseball player, because you could just put the hat on, put some freckles on, you know what? And we'll run around and get candy. That's really what it's all about, isn't it? Jeremy Lazon. Off the Susie. Battled for. Ultimately, punch free for Don Score. Swoops in and hits shot, rocketed up high on the glass, but stays within the surface. So it shorts around. Two goal lead for the Oilers as we come up midway point of the third period. Don Score tripped over the end line there, and it rolled side of the net where it's covered by Koskinen.
You belong in the Molson Hall of Fan. Nominate yourself or a fellow fan today. Must be legal drinking age. No purchase necessary. Four two Oilers. Dry settle digging in. One of our colleagues told me that poet John Milton sourced for that quote, luck of the residue of design. I, of course, got it from sports. Dry settle, nurse, Bouchard, and now taken away by Everly. Three on two coming the other way for the crack, and Everly across, and then off the field. Stick. He's had a couple of looks, Louie, where he hasn't made clean contact. And now that one hops out of play. Less than 10 to go. Oilers closing in on a 7-1 start. Heavy hitters and injury law. It's going to be Essa Pulley-Arvey on Nathan Bastion. And watch this little reverse shoulder. Bastion, a physical big player, comes in to try to hit Pulley-Arvey. And he gets hit in the process. It's a nice stand up. And once again, another example of how Yessa is able to just use that size to keep all the pucks and disrupt in the offensive zone. Digging in for a D zone draw. Devin Shore, but it pops free for Vince Dunn. Seattle not done here yet. Second of a back to back for the Kraken. Trying to dig in and find a way to get this game level over the next nine and change. Giordano, Cassian finishes his check, but he had to get back on side. Fogel recognized and ultimately just gave the puck back to the Kraken. They're 175 feet away from drawing close. Wenberg, bounce back here for him in Florida last season. Scored 17. He had really fallen out of favor in Columbus. Keith lifts off glass. There's a reverse hit from Cassian on Giordano, and that Helps power the puck back to through center and on to Everly stick for Seattle. Tana cut off by Keith. CC will leave it for the veteran who has his first goal as an Oiler as he hits 1,200 games played for his magnificent career. Ford return off for Brandon Tana. Working on Bouchard. Centers one timer and a save made by Koskin. And Tana unable to get it elevated. And it may come back to haunt him. Here comes McDavid and Hyman at 2 on 1. McDavid the trailer. Pooley Army back to McDavid. Not in shooting position. One extra pass, too many. Here's Pooley Army. Dealt back to Bouchard. One and a fire from Nurse. Block shot Tana. Rebound whistle by Pooley Army. Bouchard a shot, double ricochet. Hyman turns it back, broken stick, so it's kind of a five on four and a half here. Faking the one-timer, Bouchard looking to create for Nurse. Beneath the goal on Bouillardby, beautiful centering pass, and Hyman robbed by Decord. What a feed from Yessa Pugliarvi, Gene Principe. Wow, what a play. Uh, speaking of playing, it's the largest game day 50-50. Tonight's 50-50 net proceeds will support the Native Counseling Services of Alberta. The pot is currently, geez, it's almost half a million, $495,000. Buy now at edmontonoilers.com. After a long period in the offensive zone, a beautiful pass out from behind the net. Paul Yarby right onto the tape of Hyman in the slot. He kind of couldn't believe that that one didn't find the back of the net. What a save by DeCord. Face-off win for Geeky, the puck. Funneled out, trying to chop it back in. Nugent Hopkins turned over to Yamamoto. Ahead for dry subtle. Yamamoto, he's in, he jumps and scores! He needed that one! He's got it! And Edmonton might have just sealed the deal. 5-2 Oilers! And you can see the Edmonton bench just explode standing up. They knew that the kid was struggling a little bit, trying to get off the schneid, hadn't scored in a long time for Kyler Yamamoto. And you kind of felt that he was working towards this. It was about to happen. He just takes this one to the net. Beautiful little pass right here by Dreisaitl. Feeds it through three Seattle Kraken. And then Yamamoto finishes it off. Beautiful little backhand to forehand tuck five hole. And you mentioned he needed that one and the bench was up and ready for him. They were excited for Yamamoto tucking that one.
Just one goal in his last 36 games, including the four game sweep at the hands of Winnipeg last year in the postseason. He'd been around the net. Sometimes when you get as many chances, they finally go in. And Yamamoto might have put Seattle away. We've got an icing ball coming against the Kraken. Even the crowd could kind of feel the energy from the team. He recognized the support. And Dry Sun loves playing with him. Yeah, he really does. And this is kind of a nice little steal by Yamamoto in the neutral zone. And then just a beautiful little pass by Dry He draws so many players to him. And then he just threads it through onto the tape. And that speed and attacking the net by Yamamoto opens up the pads, tucks it home. 15th career four point game for Leon Drysaddle. He's now tied with Connor McDavid for the league scoring lead. Here's Benson looking for the first NHL goal, and that was stopped by the court. Who's been touched for five goals on 19 shots? Duncan Keith at center. Sure, right hand side. Lost the handle, and now Wenberg on the comeback. Flipped back the other way by Duncan Keith. Lazon and Giordano trade the puck back in their own end. Tanner sends it in deep. Six and a half to go. Rolled in front. Koskinen kept it out. Disappeared into the pile. Including Keith and Tanner. And finally extracted by CeCe to Devin Shore. Who golfs it safely out to Turks. And on toward Decor. Edmonton. If it finishes this one off, it would be 7 and 1 for the third time in the last six seasons. Inadvertently booted out a play out of the Seattle bench by Cassidy. Yeah, you can just kind of feel it now. They sense that they weathered that push by Seattle. Miko Koskinen with some great saves to keep it a one goal game. And then that goal was so crucial by Kyle Turris to give him the two goal lead again, the one by Yamamoto, just to get him off the Schneid and extend the lead to three. But Koskinen with a few huge saves throughout this game has just allowed his team to kind of weather the pushes that the Kraken have put on. And that's what you expect from your goaltender. You know, for Miko Koskinen, he stepped in there after Mike Smith got injured in the third game of the season. He's looked good. Yamamoto getting the goal against the team, of course, representing his home state, Louis. Yeah. Yamamoto and Derek Ryan both hail from Spokane, Washington. Two nice home. and call whistled against Cassidy. Excuse me. Yeah, sorry, two of only six. From Spokane, or born in Spokane, to play in the National Hockey League. And for Kyle Yamamoto, you could just kind of sense there was a couple games where you could just see he was gripping that stick a little tight. There was an opportunity last game in Vancouver Saturday to take that shot from the slot. He kind of handled a little bit too much, and sometimes that's all it takes is just a nice little tuck like that to get you going and free your mind up a little bit. But as you heard the panel talk about all night long, too, Yamamoto does a lot of other things away from the offensive game. Pass whistle to Giordano, and then he tried to slide it in front. Schwartz unable to get the tap in, and a clear by Warren Fogel. But there's no question, if you're going to play with Leon Dreisaitl in the top six of the Edmonton Oilers, you're going to have to produce and provide, and you hope that this is the start of big things for Yamamoto. And again, he went on that run nearly a point again. Here's Everly weaving in and shooting wide. A couple of brilliant stick maneuvers on his way to the net, but couldn't finish. Cassie unable to clear. Oilers. Again, another neutral zone turnover. Here's Wenberg. This one not over. You still got to take care of business. And Rose a little sloppy with a puck here. Darnell Nurse up through to Fogel. Batted down at center and Schwartz in transition. Try to catch the Oilers in a line change. Chip just out of the reach of Jordan Everly. It's really been consistent theme. I mean, they're not all Picassos, Louis, but the Oilers are just stacking up the wins. And again, it's worth noting, victory tonight, and they're a perfect 5-0 within the division. Well, you know, it's control. We talked about that this morning, you and I, just the fact that Hyman walks in. Quick shot to stop by DeCord. Just couldn't quite that, get that puck elevated. And DeCord has in his clutches a 17th save, but Yamamoto Perhaps turning the lights out on the Kraken. It's 5-2. Largest and most reliable network. Game number 1,200 for Duncan Keith, and he scores his first goals in Edmonton. Oh, a beautiful little give and go. 
McDavid to Dreisaitl. Dreisaitl just kind of walks down and threads this through. A little bit of a fan. But Keith is right there on the doorstep to jam at home and the celebrations afterwards with a grizzled vet. And again, luck is the residue of the side. There you go. <laughs> Bring it up again. <laughs> I can't agree more. <laughs> Branch Ricky in the sporting field, most often attributed to him, longtime general manager of Major League Baseball. Also once coached football at the college where my dad worked for four years. No, I came up with that. I can trust me. I'm not smart enough yeah, to remember it. He's listening. He's all over. Oh, yeah. He liked that. Trust me. He's all over. He me. gave you an A for that. <laughs> you get the straight A, Louie. I'm never <laughs> in that ballpark. B minus on a good day. Here's McDavid. Stripped and cleared. Just out of the reach of Max McCormick and retrieved by Cody Cece. He'll put him off the wall. Yes, a pool yard. You also note our colleague John Jack right there on it. Keeps us in line. Yep. Larson. Susie. Up the gut for Yarncroak, forced to get ground. Dry Settle, Nugent Hopkins. Yamamoto back out there. Doskin and out to handle. Tanf able to cut it off. Popped off the stick. Short. Here's a redirect and a tough save made on Tanf by Miko Koskin. Holding sway. It's his 25th of the night. Dry settle the other way. Pulls up. Trying to slither one down low for Nugent Hopkins. You wanted a shot there, partner? <laughs> I, don't, I think if Nugent Hopkins has goals by this point in the season, that's a zipper by Dry settle right there with the other one on the doorstep. But I think he was looking for his buddy there. Well pointed out. Keep the clear. Shore and fired in by Cece. Shore. Down, gives it up, shot curse off the pads of Joey DeCord. Rebound Tyler Benson. Threw it in front and had it stolen away by Everly. Schwartz with a chip and charge. Bouchard played it well. Nurse failed to clear. Giordano across. Quick shot done. Tipped on the net. Off the right pad of Koskinen. Guided off last, not out just yet. Turris and Benson there to create for Bouchard, and now he'll trade the puck to Nurse. Edmonton plays host to Nashville here. 6.30 faceoff for him Wednesday night hockey. And then rounds out the three-game homestand for Friday to the New York Rangers. And again, Kevin Lowe's jersey up into the rafters here in Edmonton. Shot by Kuku, redirected dangerously by. Picked up by Larson. That's a 7.30 pace up. You want to get here early on Friday night for the festivities involving Kevin Lowe. Fogel is on tracking him. Protects the puck. Slashed and free for Larson. Ryan trying to squeeze by, couldn't do it. Larson engaged. Shea up the middle. And then went off the backhand side of Barry. Coming up on a minute to play. Edmonton with victory secure at 5-2. The Oilers will start 7-1. Bracken will fall to 3, 6-1. But they were gritty tonight. Gave Edmonton fits at times. At one point, the shots were 18-7. The Oilers, as they have for much of the year, have found a way. Alexiak to Donato. Quick shot off the rush to save Koskin and against McCork. Swallowed that one up. Trying to close this one out. You mentioned this earlier, Jack, about the start this year with this win tonight, which we're going to give them with 38 seconds left. I think that's safe to say. 7-1-0 in the season for the third time in the last six years they've done that. So another good start by a team that, listen, coming into the season, a lot of expectations, a lot from themselves. The way they've been speaking, talking, they know that this is their time. They want to do more and not do a good start. As you have said also, not necessarily the cleanest of games, but that control. And we talked about it earlier. They find a way in the big moments to make the big play and have won seven in the first game.
Great teams aren't always great. They're just great when they have to be. A lot of hockey to be played this season before you can call the Oilers a great team. But they're off to an outstanding start, and now they're hearing it from the 16,000 plus. Oilers five, Kraken two, Edmonton seven and one. A lot of taps for that guy right there. He closed the door when Seattle was pushing their best sequence of the game to try and tie the game. He was there to stop those shots and allow his team to weather that storm and finish this one off five to two with a couple more goals. Let's get a look at our Molson Canadian three stars, if you will, partner. Yeah, a lot to choose from tonight, but Miko Koskinen, we just said 27 saves, especially some crucial ones in a one-goal game. Duncan Keene, first goal as an Oiler in his 1,200th career NHL game. Congratulations to him. And Leon Dreisaitl, his 15th career four-point night, is your first start. Rogers Oilers Hockey on Sportsnet. Brought to you by Rogers 5G. Canada's largest and most reliable 5G network by Ford, the official automotive partner of the Edmonton Oilers. Ford, built Ford proud. And by Molson Canadian, official partner of the Edmonton Oilers. Rep our home. Three crucial games over the next 48 hours. Tomorrow, the Calgary Flames play host to Nashville, 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain on Sportsnet 360. Meanwhile, over on Sports at 1, the Canucks will take on the New York Rangers in Vancouver, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. And Scotiabank Wednesday night hockey, as we alluded to, back here at Rogers Place when the Oilers take on the Nashville Predators. That's 8 Eastern and 6 Mountain. The Oilers now with a record of 7-1, a 5-2 victory over the Seattle Kraken. Miko Koskinen, 27 saves. And Leon Dreisaitl, two goals, two assists. The turning point of the night, though, the save on Everly. And the fourth one, Kyle Turris, puts the game out of reach. Sportsnet Central on deck with Ken and Jesse. For Louis DeBrusque and Gene Prince I'm Jack Michaels. Ladies and gentlemen, the pleasure was all ours.